guys, today I've got my wedding story for you and how we got married for under £3,000. Now for me, a wedding is a very, very personal thing and you have to do whatever is going to make you happy. This is just what we did and how we kept costs down for our budget and how you can do it if you also have a budget and you also want to have a small wedding. So just a little background on our wedding. We only had 18 guests. Yes, 18, and they were our close family and friends, and it was perfect for us. We didn't really want any more people, and also we couldn't fit any more people as to where we had the wedding. But just a note on this, because of the style of wedding that we had, we could have doubled, even tripled our guest list and not made it that much more expensive. So if you do have more friends and family that you want to invite, and you want to sort of take on how we did it, then you can definitely do that with this sort of style of wedding that I'm going to talk to you about today. So I'm going to start off with the dress which was obviously all for me and that was probably one of the biggest parts of the cost of our wedding and actually my parents bought me my dress so I was very very lucky on that count and I was going to just buy myself a dress before my parents offered for, from ASOS they do some really beautiful affordable dresses on ASOS so if you are on a tight budget and you still want to get married then you can still do that. I kind of went middle range with my dress I went with the brand Needle and Thread they have a beautiful range I just looked on their website they have some new styles out for bridal wear and they are stunning. The dress that I got was £650 and it was embellished with these beautiful sequins of flowers and it was just so pretty. It was white and the sequins were like a silvery, copperiness to them. It, they were so stunning. And with that I got a cape which I believe was £200. So in total my dress was around £800. To 850 so it was still very very expensive but not as much as if you'd gone to like a bridal boutique or anything like that uh, so you can still go like mid-range and get something stunning I definitely will suggest looking at these on thread I'll leave the link to my dress below and you can go check out all the other beautiful dresses that they have and you know what it's a dress that I can wear again it's like one of those styles that I could definitely wear if I was going to a very posh do or something like that it is absolutely stunning and I'm so glad that I can wear it again and I know people say that you shouldn't wear your wedding dress again that it's bad luck I'm not really superstitious in that sort of way at all and I'm definitely going to be wearing that wedding dress again Moving on to things that you definitely have to pay for and things that you can't get away with paying for, uh, unfortunately, and that is uh, registering to get married. You must register to get married with your council and that costs around £70. So you have to pay that and they just go through making sure that it's you're legal to marry in the country that you're marrying in. And they also put your notice out for 30 days. So you have to give 30 days before you get married so that anyone can object and objection is whether they know that you can't get married in the country for some reason or if you're married already or if you're trying to marry a relative or something like that uh, then those are the reasons that they people can object to so that's what you pay the £70 for obviously depending on where you're getting married we got married in a registry office you have to pay for the registrar we got married in the week we got married on a Thursday and that made it a lot lot cheaper I think it was £250 to get married during the week and it was more like £600 to get married like on a Saturday so that's another way that we save money because obviously you have to pay to get married that's just how it is and for us we midweek was perfect and it was a lot more affordable so if you have the means to get married midweek, I know it's a bit awkward if you have lots of people coming with work and that sort of thing. Because we had such a small wedding, not that many people had to take time off work, so it was fine. Uh, so yeah, definitely something to consider. If you can get married in midweek, definitely give that a thought. Now moving on to venue. So we really wanted to get um, married near where we live. We moved into sort of just around sort of the London area. We bought a house and we wanted to get married pretty much close to home. So we decided to actually have our venue as, as our garden now we have a tiny garden but i still wanted it to look special and pretty and beautiful one of the reasons why we only had 18 guests was because of the size of our garden what we did was we got these gazebos that my dad already had which we were really lucky and we put them up because we didn't know whether it was going to be sunny or if it was going to rain because this is britain you can never tell so we put two gazebos up and then I hired some chairs and tables from a local company and it wasn't very expensive at all. It was like 50, 60 pounds to hire some tables and chairs. And my friend had just got married and she already had tablecloths so she let me those and she also let me some garlands and some just some decorations. And we put all those up with some lights 
and do you know what it was beautiful so we had little paper plates which i got from where did i get it from ginger ginger and k or something like that i'll try and find them and link them below they were like a liberty design and they were so pretty and florally and it just went really really well with the style that we went for and i'm going to be inserting pictures so you can see all of this so you'll know what i'm talking about but yeah really really pretty and do you know what it was perfect that it was at home it wasn't stressful it was really nice the only thing that you are going to have to do if you do it at home is obviously you're going to have to do all the work in regards to setting everything up and then after the wedding we had to obviously take everything down but that was fine it wasn't difficult because there wasn't that much to do but yeah it's definitely something that you have to work more if you're doing it yourself and you're trying to keep costs down but overall it was so beautiful and i'm very very happy of how it turned out moving on to food now normally when you have like a big venue wedding you have to pay like 80 60 to 80 pounds per person a head which in my opinion is like whoa that's a lot of money uh so we obviously didn't do that we didn't have any caterers we had a barbecue andrew my husband loves barbecues he's obsessed with them they're not my favorite thing actually but i don't mind them and i didn't cook it so it was absolutely fine um so we had a beautiful barbecue in our garden and we were so lucky with the weather because this is going to be a bit of a rant i'm really sorry about that but the night the day before which is when we were supposed to be setting up all the gazebos and setting everything up it poured with rain and i mean poured for the entire day it did not stop raining and i was getting very very stressed the day before because we couldn't set anything up and i was just like oh my god when are we going to be able to do this anyway it was still raining at nine o'clock at night and we said that's it we've got to go out it was pitch black we went out in the garden in the rain and we set up our gazebos put all the decorations out and you know it stopped raining at around 10 o'clock and we were able to finish up but that was quite stressful that was a little bit stressful but we were very very lucky that the next day our wedding day was beautiful sunshine it was around 24 degrees so it wasn't too hot wasn't too cold and it was just perfect for a barbecue and i'm so glad that we did it that way and andrew had a great time cooking everything and we also got salads from marks and spencers so i didn't make any of the salads or anything like that i ordered them in from the catering of marks and spencers and just put them out in nice dishes and that sort of thing and that came to around 200 pounds and then the meat was really really nice because andrew's parents got us the meat and that was came all the way down from caveness in scotland so it was really fresh meat it was really lovely super delicious high quality meat and again i think overall the food probably costs around 500 pounds but we could have fed at least triple the amount of people for the amount that we got. We definitely overbought because we were worried that we wouldn't have enough. And I know that you do that. So we had so much. We literally ate the food for like three or four days afterwards to try and finish it off. But it was so worth it. It was so delicious and yummy. And it was just great. I just love that. I made a cake myself. I just made a normal simple carrot cake. And that was really good too. So yeah, really, really happy with how the food went. And everyone had a lot of food. They could eat as little or as much as they wanted. And obviously we bought in alcohol as well. So we had wine and pims and basically anything, beer. And we had soft drinks as well because I know lots of people would be driving. We just had a lot of stuff on offer. And the alcohol we didn't spend like loads of money on. We got the wine from Lidl and the pims and that just from like tesco's so it wasn't like super expensive at all for the uh alcohol and it do you know what we had a lot left over there too <laughs> we were giving people wine as they came around our house after our wedding for like months going do you want some wine do you want some wine because <laughs> we didn't we don't really drink wine so we were like trying to get rid of it but yeah really really perfect the food was delicious and i was very very happy with that moving on to flowers now flowers i did go out and source out from somewhere else uh, we went to a local florist and I got my hand bouquet made and it was so beautiful. It's such a beautiful bouquet. It was really perfect and it was the perfect size because I'm quite tiny and I didn't want anything too big. So they made it really perfectly to sort of fit me. And we also got three table uh, arrangements to go on the tables outside. And then me and my mum the night, day before the wedding went to Marks and Spencers and bought similar colours to what I'd asked the florist for and bought a few bunches of each and then made a few vases up to go in the house so we did do that ourselves but the main flower arrangements were from a lovely local florist and that did cost around 
200 pounds so it wasn't like overly expensive but we only had three tables to do and the hand bouquet so flowers can be really expensive if you have like more tables and more like bridesmaids and that sort of thing i didn't have any bridesmaids so it was just me that i had to think about we also picked up some fake flowers which i know that sounds really crazy but we bought them and what we did was we got these roses which were beautiful and white and we also got some peonies that were sort of look like they hadn't quite opened up yet and they were all fake and they were on like a garland and we wound them up all the way around the poles of the gazebos that we had outside so that they all had flowers on them as well and they also did some outside the front door and you know what they looked so perfect and beautiful i would definitely consider if you want something like an archway or something like that look at the the fake flower garlands that are out there because they're beautiful and they're a lot more affordable than making it real and also you can keep them afterwards i also picked up some shoes from asos i completely forget to forgot to mention them and they were stunning and they kind of went really well with my dress and they were very very sort of out there shoes but you could hardly see them with my dress so when you did see them people were like oh look at your shoes they were really really perfect and beautiful and i'm very very happy and again i'm going to wear them again too they're definitely something that i could wear with another outfit so that was pretty much it for our wedding day we had a great little party in our garden and it was perfect and i wouldn't change it for anything and i'm so happy with how it turned out and i thought i'd share that with you because you, you don't have to have a grand wedding for it to be perfect and if you feel like you feeling like you should have one because other people expect you to have one don't do it do what you want to do have the wedding you want because you're only hopefully going to do it once and you want it to be perfect and i really do feel like mine was so i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up do subscribe and i'll see you in my next video see you later